All right, good evening and welcome to another Tuesday night uh, lecture run by the Mid-Ulster Amateur Radio Club. Uh, we're back again and uh, back in the full, sw full swing. Uh, you can catch our other YouTube videos as well on uh, our uh, channel, www.youtube.com forward slash M-E-A-R-C media, where all our previous lectures have taken place and are on there for your viewing. Uh, we're glad to be joined this evening uh, by Dean, uh, and I'm going to pass over to Dean in a wee second. And uh, Dean, maybe you can start off, tell us, uh, I'll uh, unmute you there, but oh, yep, great. Tell us a wee bit about yourself, uh, your call sign and everything else, and where whereabouts you are in the world. Right, okay. Uh well, my name's Dean, Dean Bryce. Uh, call sign is Golf Zero Uniform India Lima. Um, about myself, I don't really like to talk about myself, but I will do, if you asked. Um, i always been into radio uh, ever since I was a, a, a young lad. of uh, Sort of about the age of 11, I would say, 11, 12. Um, but prior to that, I was always into uh, motors and bulbs and batteries and switches and things like that but when I went to the as we called it back then the big school um, comprehensive school they had a, an evening class once a week uh, which was the electronics club um, part of the science department and um, now I, I got introduced to radio in a way that it was uh, a crystal set and um, so I, I, I built my first crystal set. Uh, I used a Meccano base. I remember it now, it, was, it wasn't made of wood. <laughs> it was a Meccano base. Um, I took the ferrite rod out of the back of a, an old wild radio I had. Um, the earpiece, the school bought in, so we bought them from the school. Uh, the diode was a germanium OA81, I think it was. I think the the, uh, the the name of the diode, um, an old tuning capacitor. Oh, this is taking about some years. The old tuning capacitor taken out of a an old radio and uh, last all together and and uh, slung a wire out the classroom and uh, heard radio on it. Back then there was a lot of AM commercial radio activity, so it was it was fun. Um, and then when I built that, my friend said to me, can you build me one? So I had a bit of a business going, really, <laughs> building crystal sets. And then um, on from that, um, uh, it was the ZN414. It was a 10 transistor um, IC, three-legged IC. Uh, you connected up your capacitor coil, your, your resonator, and then your crystal earpiece, a few capacitors, a couple of resistors, and you had a, um, a standalone AM uh, receiver. Um, and you didn't need an aerial, which is great, you know. Um, and then on from that, I wanted it to build a transmitter. But unfortunately, I think the laws changed a lot because I used to look at magazines from the 1950s and 60s and see walkie-talkies advertised in, in, the, in the older magazines. And, and I couldn't get my hands, you know, on a pair of walkie-talkies. Then a, a friend of mine, he came back from Spain and he brought a pair back, um, but he managed to break one and I sort of repaired it, cobbled it, you know, together and then got it working. And that was when I was about sort of 13, 14. And then I got a job in a television shop delivering. I was a delivery boy, uh, delivering televisions um, to customers. Um, always wanted to be a radio engineer, really, on from the crystal set. Never wanted to be a television engineer, but they came hand in hand. You had to do both, so hey-ho. Um, so then I got an apprenticeship in the same shop, done my apprenticeship, which was a four year long apprenticeship back then. Uh, job for life, everybody said, but um, they, were, they, weren't, they were wrong, weren't they? They weren't right at all. Um, and then um, I went to different companies like everybody does. Um, on from that, uh, video recorders, 
DVD, sorry, CD players. Um, yeah, I did the cassette thing, CD players and so on. And then it all sort of died. All the repair industry died. China became the superpower for electronics. And people then would um, rather uh, chuck it away and buy new than get it repaired. So I took up computer programming. And um, then I designed, and I, I could say, and I'll say this, and I'd like to be um, challenged over it, but I, I, I designed the first Arduino. Um, I've still got all the documentation from um, Atmel, the company Atmel, which did the chip at the time, and they still do now. Well, they don't more, they sell that to microchip. But um, I've still got the original design of the Arduino. Right. It doesn't look like the Arduino looked, but all the documentation there, all the emails backwards and forwards for proof that I was, of course, I took the idea to the company and um, then all of a sudden the Arduino came out. Um, so whether I missed the boat, whether they took my idea, who knows, but I, I could say I was the, you know, I was there at the beginning and it wasn't the same chip as they use now. Granted, it was a bigger chip. It was a 40 pin chip with a lot more power uh, than the one they use on the yeah. Uno. Um, but as, as, as they've gone on, they've, they've um, different versions. And I, I do use the Arduino board even now because they're so cheap, you know, off of eBay, was it three pound or something for an Arduino? Yeah. Uh, something like that. So um, when that went on, I so I designed a lot of things around the Arduino. And then um, I designed a, <clears throat> how I got involved with the RAIBC is I designed a SWOMIA. I had no idea, you know, that it, it popular. Um, it was just an SWOMIA with a screen on it, a few buttons. It, it sort of gave you the power, uh, reflective power, uh, peak power. It did, it did different functions. And then somebody said to me, can you put a voice on it? So um, I put a voice. And the first voice I put on it was... Um, do you know, what? I can't remember the name of the chip, but it was a. It sounded like a robot. Um, it was better than the Spectrum mm -hmm. voice, you know, um, but it still sounded like a robot. And then I thought that is not good enough. So what I did then is I wrote a program, which really got out of control. Got out of control <laughs> because I wanted other things to put on it. So I did. I put all that on it, and then what I used then is samples. So. When you hear the talking box, that's samples playing. Now, it might sound simple. People say, oh, yeah, you can put a sample on it and it'll play a sample. But when you're talking about a display on, on a transceiver, um, it's got one, two, I think it's something about eight. It can be up to eight digits. So I've got to pick the sample at the right time, play it sample, and then do other things in the background. So that's where all the complicatedness come around. I mean, Anybody could put a sample on the chip, press a button, and it say the same thing over yeah. again. But this has got to interact with the actual transceiver and the end user. And plus, if you've seen it, it also talks to the radio as well. So if it's doing a lot. It's doing yeah, a lot. If you, yeah, if you press a button, um, it will, then the radio will do what the, the button um, is sort of programmed to do. Um, I also, I also wrote um, an AI program on mobile phone. I was trying to get into, uh, you know, mobile phone apps. So I, I wrote a couple of programs on, on, on mobile phone. Um, and I wrote and built back, oh, it's got to be almost 20 years ago now, um, mobile phone activation for car alarms on a, an SPV 500 mobile phone. And I also uh, remotely from a mobile phone um, connected to a transceiver. So I could um, dial up the frequency on my mobile phone and send it to the transceiver and, and the transceiver did it. So all the, all the apps that I see now, I, I sort of, not every one, don't get me wrong, but a lot of the apps you see now, I, I sort of wrote, that sort of thing back years ago and TCPIP and it's, yeah, and it's all it's all old old hat. It is really, and, and we're, we're, yeah. We've we've seen your Bluetooth satellite tracker yeah. in 
uh, in the flesh, and it's a great piece of kit. Yeah. But you mentioned the, uh, the RAIBC, Dean. Yeah. Um, what 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 is it? Right. Who is it? Where you know? Right. What's the history? Okay. There? Well, the RAIBC actually started. I guess. I guess. I've been given these bits of paper here, and I've got to get this right because if I do it wrong, I mean, I wasn't around in World War in in in, in the Second World War, so um, I wouldn't know. But before the Second World War, okay, there was a friendship society of radio amateurs at a Bedfast section. Now, the Bedfast section was people that were disabled. Uh, I suppose they called it Bedfast because they were in bed. And the charity, I think, must have started then where they would help people out that needed help um, with a radio. Because originally it was, uh, as far as I, I'm aware and I found out, it, it was originally just the standard commercial radio. It wasn't um, a, an am a nothing to do with amateur radio. It was, a, it was a Vol radio and obviously back in World War II, uh, a Vol radio. But then towards the end of... Um, of the 1950s, sorry, towards the end of 1953, um, that wound up and then it became the Radio Amateur Invalid and Bedfast Club um, in 1954. Um, so now we're, we're sort of 1954, so now we've moved on from the Second World War, we're into 1954. Um, we've now changed the name um, and then the name changed again. I'm not quite sure. I think it was, I'm going to go back through here. Um, I'm not quite sure when it actually changed the name. Now, the RAIBC was known as the Radio Amateur and Invalid Blind Club. Um, but for today's, you, you're not allowed to use certain words like invalid. Okay, so you can't use invalid. So it is the RAIBC. So when people say to us, you know, what does it actually stand for? It is the RAIBC because <laughs> we, can, we can offend a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, but we do explain this to them. Um, so the actual, um, the actual club itself, um, and what we do is we help disabled and, well, not, not necessarily disabled people, but anybody really that wants to join the RAIBC. Um, we've got supporting members. Um, we we got supporting members. We've got affiliated clubs join, uh, as well as disabled people. And the the main goal that we've been finding since lockdown, I'd say the main goal since lockdown, but the the, the, the feedback that we get from uh, when we've been in lockdown is a lot of people have been asking for our help with them passing the um, exams, you know, the foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Year and the advanced so we can help them in that way by um supplying uh discs now these discs are read by our readers um so we've got the foundation license the intermediate and the the uh, full um license read on cd so um we've been helping yeah people. that's great and instead of all the paper they, they can actually have the audio files of the that's content right. and... yeah yeah um and also, um, we we do uh, a monthly um, magazine online. Well, actually, it's on CD. We we send the CDs out to uh, to our members um, with certain um, magazines on there. A Radcom, we put Radcom on there. Uh, Sprat goes on there uh, every quarterly, and there's a couple of other features. You know, other featured magazines on the on the desk. Great stuff, great stuff. Yeah. So uh, you, you're a complete, the RAIBC is a, a charity, obviously, but how does it get, uh, or, or do you want to tell us a wee bit about the equipment side of things? How, how does that work? Or, or you know, say an amateur who is uh, short of sighted says, or someone who says, I'd love to learn my license, the pass or license, what happens then if they've no equipment, Dean? What, what can they do? Right, okay. Well, first of all, they've got to become a member. Um, now, if they obviously, if they're not an amateur radio operator, then we can only loan them uh, receivers. 
No, we can't loan them the, the transceiver. So they'll come to us, just say for scenario, they haven't got an amateur radio license yet. They come to us and then we will supply them or we loan them a disc because they're all watermarked now um, due to people copying them and copyrights and everything else. So, so if somebody comes along, hasn't got an amateur radio license, they'll, th then they'll join the RAIBC. Then we loan them a, a foundation um, disc. They will then get in touch with the RSGB, which is uh, Dave Wilson. Um, Dave Wilson's um, our equipments manager um, from the, the ex-president of the RSGB. So put them in touch with Dave, because as you know, Dave does all the exams, or you know, he's, he's sort of in charge of the exams. And, um, and then once they once they've passed, as long as they become a member of the RAIBC for six months or more then they fill a form in. And um, then what we'll do is we will have a meeting and then we can decide which equipment is, is gonna be, um, you know, the best sort of, of, of equipment that they, uh, that, the, that they can have. So do you have this big, or does the RAIBC have a big stockpile of Radios, or no. is it is it bought new, or is it donated? Or? It, well, it, it it depends. Um, we have actually uh, we did actually buy buy new radios. Um, we bought a lot of the T one nine nine network radios, um, oh, and yeah. the I, I can't remember the other. There was another model. Um, because what we were finding is a lot of our members. Well, say a lot. I can't say a lot of our members, but. Uh, Quite a few of our members are now moving out of their home and into retirement places where they can't put an aerial up. A lot of people are disabled that are in, um, you know, um, I don't know what they call it, social housing, you know, where they can't put an antenna up. So that comes into it. The radios that we loan out, um, we have got certain new, um, new stock. Um, because it depends on what their, you know, what their needs are. Um, you know, it's no, and I'll say this, it's no good in giving a blind person a seven, you know, an IC7300, you know, an ICOM7300 because it's touch screen. Yeah. So they would want a hands-on transceiver. Uh, the 570 is, uh, is a common transceiver that we've got. Um, the 450 is is a transceiver that we got. Um, so so depends on their needs. Then we would um, you know we would sort of choose. I know that might sound like you know oh hang on, <laughs> everybody wants a 7300. But the thing is is to navigate around a touch screen is you know is difficult. I would imagine it would be very difficult. And the feedback we got is difficult. And and uh, you know it goes completely on their needs the individual uh you know there's no real blanket template is there dean it's i take it each person is assessed individually yeah yeah that's right um now uh, we talk about antennas don't we you know everybody would like a tower no doubt about it i don't know of any amateur <laughs> radio operator that you know who want a tower um that's a, you know in some cases yes they can have a tower um so first of all, the first thing that we establish is their aerial. Now, the reason for this is because if they say, for argument, they have a lone transceiver and they've got nowhere to put an antenna, they will put an antenna inside either their flat or their house. They've got no garden, um, which then will kill the radio, okay? Um, you know, they, they transmit without a tuner or they, the radio hasn't got, that's why the radios have got tuners, not because it's the best thing, it's because it saves the radio, you know, because tuning up a, a, a radio with a, yeah. a, a manual tuner isn't that, you know, isn't that easy, not really. Oh, hang on a second. I just, <laughs> cool. yeah. um, so, um, you, it does go with needs, yes. Um, yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, and you, you mentioned the word there, the, the RAIBC loans mm -hmm. equipment. Is the equipment loaned out for one year, two years, three years? Or, or 
what is the time frame? How does well, that actually work? I, I mean, when we took over, um, a couple of members still had. Do you know I can't even remember the model numbers, but these these radios must have been thirty years old. You know, forty years <laughs> old, maybe even fifty years old. It's it's as long as you're a member of the RAIBC, as long as you support the RAIBC, then you can have it as long as you want. I mean, obviously things happen, they break, and, and everything else. Um, but we don't charge for for any any. The only sure. thing that we try to you know, say to say to our members is, if you drop it, then you know, obviously, you know, it can be an accident. It, but uh, if 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 it was if it was completely smashed to, to to bits, and it's obvious that something has happened. I mean, obviously, we can't prove it, and we've yeah. never done this, and and we probably wouldn't. But if a radio did come back, you know, completely destroyed, then it's obvious that that person has destroyed it. You know, rather than it, but. Uh, We've had radio dropped. We've had the fronts, you know, the VFO um, smashed yeah, yeah. into this, you know, the back of the PCB. Um, but um, but on a majority, a lot of people do look after their equipment from us, which which we would like, you know, like when we when we do loan Absolutely. out, we say, look, this this equipment, treat it like your own. Yeah, very much so. So the RAIBC, uh, like, is it just a UK uh, charity for radio amateurs in the UK, or uh, is there other equivalent? You know, and, and how many even members? Uh, <laughs> do you know what? Charity have? Or, or? Do you know what, Ron? I don't know how did she put it now. She gave me a piece of paper. I, I wish I could bend <laughs> my neck properly. Thank you. No, she, she, she did, she, I say Sandra, did write it down. She said, see this? Oh, here it is. I got it, I got it. Right, okay, here we go. Statistics and, yeah. Well, we've got 355 members, okay? Um, 284 of those are disabled. 47 are supporting members. 13 are overseas and 11 clubs. Um, that's that's all our, our members. Um we now the disc, the magazine disc that has radio user, practical wireless, radcom, uh, Sprat when Sprat's released. We we don't do it anymore. Um, we did the RAIBC do it, but our um, disc manager does it 117 discs every month. Wow! So that's that's um, this is where our money goes on the day yeah, yeah, you know yeah. 117 and we do 28 radcoms for our members because if you if you remember the rsgb you can automatically get the rad uh, the radcom on yeah, yeah. The CD from us so we get a list from the rsgb every month and then uh we send it to our what we call disc manager um and um then he'll uh produce you know he'll copy all the discs um fantastic and uh they'll go out and it's really it really is um dean bringing those people who do have additional needs but into the hobby that, that people don't feel left out um but what, what what's what's the the major sort of problem or what are, what are the biggest hurdles that the raibc finds or is there any hurdles you know uh, is it funding is it Lack of equipment or lack of supporters, even you know. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it, it varies really. Um, it is. I mean, it, it is sad when you know our a, a few members pass away. Okay, yeah. so we lose we lose members every year, um, and and you build up a relationship with the members. Um, yeah. You know, uh, they pass away, but then new ones come in. So it sort of stayed around. I mean, when we, I think, if I remember correctly, when we actually took over six years ago now, when we took over, there was less than 300 members. So we've actually got some members, you yeah, know, we've got more mem some more members than that we originally did have. Yeah. Um, 
But as for hurdles, no, it's it's. I mean, the the exam you got to 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 me. I mean, I, <laughs> I did the exam the other day because I I do it now and again. You know, you, you I, I get the RSGB. The RSGB sent out some mock exams the other day. So I look through the mock exam and you, you go to club and you, you say to your friend, you know, and I mean, I've, I've been a licensed amateur for over 30 years now. And, you know, you might say to your friends, God, you know what, I, I couldn't do the exam now if they gave me it. You know, it's a bit, <laughs> a bit like your driving test. You know, would you pass your driving test after, you know, 40 years of driving, you know? Um, but I think that the exam shouldn't change. In, in, in other words, they come to us once they've read the um or oh, sorry once they've listened to the cd yeah they go ahead and they and they pass so there's no hurdle there um but i'm just trying to think is uh, no i don't think i don't think there is i think when people do join they they stay joined yeah absolutely I, I, it's funny as you mentioned that about supporting members like in my own head it's prompted me because when you and sandra and dave and kath came over over a year ago now, uh, like I took out a supporting membership and I was just yeah. thinking, flip, that was over a year ago. I should maybe look yeah. at renewing that again. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think you'll find it back almost a year and a half ago, I think, wasn't it? A year and a half ago, yeah, at Lagan Valley Rally. Yeah, March time, I think, if I remember right. Um, so uh, it, it's prompted me yeah, again to, to, to actually... Yeah, over a year again. Yeah. Did know, you not get a reminder email, Dave? Possibly, possibly. You really got um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Dean, is there stories or success stories where you, you know you guys sort of running this charity that the top two are really proud of, or you know felt felt that you've made a real difference? And I suppose oh, yeah. a, 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 everyone is, but is there any that stick out in your own head? You know, well. I suppose I suppose there is. I mean, the the talking box was good. That was that was my idea, you know. Um, so, yeah, I suppose talking box. I, I said to Sandra, I, I said earlier on, and we were just talking, and uh, I said, um, "Is there anything that sticks out?" And um, there are. I mean, if I if I went into every if I went into a few, then those people might think, "Oh, I didn't remember." But I mean, one of them stuck out was when we came to Ireland. You know, we we brought a radio along. Um, and uh, we loaned a radio to Chapin Island, um, so that one stuck out because you you welcomed us as the RAIBC. You welcomed us as we were, yeah. And you also welcomed the the RAIBC, and when we felt great, you know, it was it was a good thing, cause, you know, coming over. Uh, but if I was to say one person, yes, there is, there is, there is. I, I remember one person this year well within the lock i say this year within yeah. the lockdown um whether this would have happened because of lockdown uh, because you know whether this has happened because of a lockdown um is another thing um but there is a there was one chap um he's in his 90s well there's, there's two there's two in the same position really they're, they're both in their 90s they both lost their wives um they're both amateur radio operators and they were, they're both blind. So really it was a similar scenario, the two to the same. And because they were both blind and, and in their, you know, in their nineties, um, we introduced them to um, the network radio, um, network radios. Um, and once they had those, that was it. They, you know, they were on there. Um, you, if, if you, if you become a member and you, join the RAIBC, you probably know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. They'll, they'll, they'll tell the story. But yeah, I, I, I mean, there are, there are, for those people out there, there are stories that, yeah, definitely. But um, the ones that stick in my mind um, during this, um, you know, pandemic is, is those two. Uh, Dean, uh, I think Jeff there, uh, did you have your, your hand up there for a wee question? So bear with me one second and uh, we'll just uh, go ahead. You should be able to ask your unmute yourself and ask your question now there, Jeff. 
Right, thanks. I was struggling there. Uh, good evening, Dave. Uh, nice, uh, Dean. Hello. Nice to nice to hear you. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, does the uh, RAIBC modify radios uh, to individual needs where necessary? Um, uh, we tried to stick to the cat port at the back of the radio, um, and then we get our information at the cat port. So we have the box that talks to the radio via the cat. Uh, modifying the, the trouble with modifying them is then you're actually going. I mean, yes, if you're into electronics, you probably quite easily go in there and modify, um, you, you know, the, the PCB for, for doing things. But doing it on every one would be a bit of a problem because if you make a mistake, you know, you could end up with a, a dead radio on your hands. You know, so we we try to use well, we had we, that's what we ever use is the, is the the cap port at the back, but if there are if there are modifications out there that can, that can be done, then yeah, by all means, you know, please let us know because there's so many different transceivers now. It's it's getting a minefield. It really is, as you can agree. You know, well, I say you agree, but you probably probably do. It is a complete minefield now. What what radios do what, and this one does that one, and that one doesn't do this, and oh, you know, so. Um, Yes, I can quite well, <clears throat> quite well believe it. But uh, yeah. as I say, I just wondered, uh, you know, uh, when people come to you with different uh, ailments or problems and uh, how you cope with all the different problems that you must get. Uh, people are asking you for help so that they can achieve. I mean, I'm thinking the main it's something like uh, somebody who may be uh, recently disabled uh, by virtue of an accident of some sort mm. uh, and they may have been a, a radio amateur in the past but maybe they've lost a, an arm or, or, or something like that yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, I'm wondering you know if there were modifications but obviously if you can do it by voice or whatever then that seems mm. to be the problem but thank you yeah, yeah no, no, that's fine yeah no I mean I mean voice yes voice recognition um is i mean voice recognition now is, is so much easier than it used to be because i say the internet is around us you know every i say everybody's got the internet but it, if you relied on that then you would get the internet installed and and let's face it record voice recognition now to write a program is is dead easy compared to what it used to be you can use google voice you know and you can implement them into the programs if, so if you know how <laughs> well yeah but i i mean i don't know I, I suppose i take it for granted really i don't know do i take it for granted why well, no i i don't know i just enjoy i just enjoy absolutely electronics and programming you know so, that's, that's my hobby and i just we, we've talked about uh you have the different types of membership there i'm gonna ask the question dean how much yeah. is membership for a supporting person if they wanted to become a supporter <laughs> how do they do that why do you ask all these questions? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she wrote it down. <laughs> well, um, Dean, are you are you not the treasurer? Are you not the man that wants the money? Yeah, I know, I know. I do. The the thing is, you see, is Sandra answers the phone. She deals with the, the people, and I and I don't, um, <laughs> and I don't see. So I I sort of tend to forget it. Right? Okay, here we go. A full disability membership is ten pound. Um, not there is another disability membership, but that's a disabled membership. A supporting member is twelve pound. An overseas member is twelve pound, and affiliated clubs are fifteen pound. So, let me do my spiel, shall I? That I normally you do. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, all of them qualify for the uh, the red and rattle. OK, which is the magazines. So which one you choose, like the, say, say the £10 one for disabled, you, you could um, ask for a disc or download off the, off the Internet. Uh, and for that, you get, like I said, you get your practical wireless, your radio user, um, Radcom and Sprat. And there, there are a couple of unusual sort of uh, magazines out there that our readers read um, and then they put their little bit on there so it, it people look forward to the CD coming through the through the door through the letterbox should I say not through the door through the letterbox 
Um, but you can go online, and as long as you remember, you just download the MP3s. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good deal for for it twelve is. twelve pound as a support member and getting access to three or four different magazines. At, at yeah, and when I say, I say the magazines, they they are read. So you can just you put them on and go to sleep. <laughs> you want. But I'll tell you something now. I it, we we used to do. Well, Sandra used to do all the all the duplication of it, but then it got too much, so we gave the duplication um, uh, to our. Um, <laughs> great stuff great stuff folks if anyone has any questions uh, about the ra abc feel free uh, duplication manager that's the word sorry i, I yeah it's a painkillers earlier on and but duplication manager um we used to do yeah 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 that's right that's what i was going to say yeah about two years ago i actually sat and listened to one and do you know what? i was hooked <laughs> I never, right? yeah yeah i, I never sat and then listen to one all the way through. What's the Rabic uh, um, web address, please? Right, it's uh, www.raibc.org.uk. Yeah, thank you very much. I might well, uh, I might well apply. Now, if you go online, and now we've got a because. We had big problems during the lockdown. Our server we used, um, in, it was based in America, kept crashing and we lost a, a huge amount of um, data um, well, on, on, the, on the actual website. But we've got the, we backed the data up so we were fine. But we then changed it to have a database, online database. So if you become a member, now you can click the membership button and PayPal, you can PayPal the payment. Um, and then that way it's, it's automatically put up on the, on the internet as a, as a, as a member rather than before we had to enter it manually, but now we've got it. Um, some, some automation makes automation, things a yeah, bit easier. That's the word. That's the word. Great stuff, and, and and I would obviously implore uh, everyone just to to do take out the membership and support uh, this great charity because the work they do is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but anyone else, any other questions there, um, or or if you'd like to volunteer, I, get involved, can I just jump on there. Absolutely. Um, um, <clears throat> this, the, sorry, Dean talks about the full membership, disabled individual UK, ten pound per year, and support member. Now, that is any disability you may have. And when I went to join Sandra, rightly informed me that if you are dyslexic, that's a disability. So you could save yourself £2 a year. I'm, I'm not trying to do the, the society or the club out of money, but you know if you have any disability at all, and Sandra would openly tell you this, you're entitled to the £10 membership just to clear. Obviously, you have to declare that that disability. So I am slightly dyslexic and I get it for £10 a year, but it's automatic payment every year, just renews. So uh, still get the remainder email, Dave, but you know, the <laughs> remainder is due. <laughs> I must have a look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, the thing is now, like I say, because because the website's sorted out, the, the, the um, emails are automatically generated. So before it was manually done, now it's automatically generated. Um, it comes and it alerts. Where before, you know, memberships lapsed and it would go on for months and months until somebody picked it up. Yeah. Um, you know, so don't, if you do receive an email, it's not because we've sent you one. Um, it is automatically generated and um, it will, I think it's about, is it two weeks prior to the membership? Um, Lapsing, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I must have a look. Um, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I, it could have come out automatically. I'm not entirely sure, but I must must check that because uh, it is something I'd like to keep keep going, you know, and uh, help out. Uh, so, Dean, uh, at the Tuesday Night Lecture Series, we, we sort of went from topic to topic, but I thought we'd break it up a wee bit. Uh, and, and talk about the uh, bringing the special interest groups uh, and you're sort of one of the first 
uh, amateur radio charities that we, we've brought in. So oh, I do yeah. want to thank you for taking the time uh, to come and speak to us about the work of the RAIBC and what you do and, and how it works and everything else. And I know there's a big team there uh, of volunteers. Or, you know, you, you've already mentioned the, the duplication and the disk manager and the equipment manager and everything else. And the, readers. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Kath as a chairwoman. Yeah, so so many people out there helping. So do pass on our, our thanks, you know. Yeah, well. And I'm sure there's there's plenty of people who've uh, has amateurs who've ha felt it a real difference uh, and benefit from the work of the charity. So it's it's been great to have you mm. along. No, that's okay. That's okay. Is it possible to get talking about it? Go on, Jeff. Is it uh, is it possible to uh, or and do you? like or appreciate uh, if uh, Silent Keys have uh, deeded their equipment to RAIBC? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, because without that, <clears throat> no, I'm not saying, no, I shouldn't really say that, but that is a help to loan the equipment. You know, um, we, the only thing that we don't loan out, um, that we, and you've probably seen it, the, the, you know, our rally stall, is power supplies, we don't, uh, they're brand new. The power supplies will be a brand new power supply for obvious reasons, you know, um, it's a fire hazard, yeah. you know, um, and the other one is um, mic uh, microphones. The, if somebody has a, say, a used piece of equipment, like, you know, a, a used radio, they will receive a new power supply, a new microphone with it. I've always said that, um, and uh, I think a lot of people would appreciate it because you can imagine somebody's microphone, you know, it's it's <laughs> nice to open a brand new microphone that hasn't um, been uh, used. So, so some people swallow their microphone yeah, whenever well, they're uh, talking. Is that uh, what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like that sometimes. I, I mean, if, if they can be cleaned up, but most of the time the, the, the paper element inside and, and all the bits of stuff inside, you know, uh, not everybody does that, I can't say everybody does that, <laughs> but on a whole it's, um, and it's normally um, desk microphones we supply because people's disabilities um, are desk microphone. Absolutely. You know? so, so that's what we, uh, but yeah, as for, um, you know, you know, people donating equipment, yes, um, if, if it's a transceiver and we can clean it out, we can, you know, learn it out, then we will. You know, okay, thank you. Or, any, or anything, really. No, thank you. Fantastic. Okay, anyone else have would like to ask Dean or, or any anything else about the RAIBC or anything at all there? No, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Dean, thank you very much uh, no, for taking the time. Well, hopefully, I've. Um give you some information and it's been it's so sorry i the trouble is is that um for those people that don't know i had a, I had a, a, a neck operation big big neck operation um last year and uh it's the, the, the operation went all right but the problem is is the the nerve damage that is left is um is there so that's why i'm i'm sort of propped up here I can't slouch. I'm not allowed to slouch. I can't go in front of a computer for long. It's a load of things that I can do. But hopefully I've sort of, you know, given you an idea of what the RAIBC is about. That's the thing. You have, you have. And we do like appreciate it. you suffering <laughs> sitting there. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah, won't yeah. Hold, we won't hold you much longer. But, you're getting uh, rid of me now, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, all right, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, just thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. This is the first Zoom meeting I've ever done, to be honest. Oh, well, it's not it, Surely it's not. This is this is, is first yeah first first Zoom meeting I've ever. I didn't even know about Zoom until about well, I don't know <clears throat> when it sort of I don't know I say about a year ago I didn't know it existed. I, you know somebody said Zoom to me, but this is the first time. In fact, I had to navigate me way round. I had to navigate my way round the computer to get the thing going. There you well, go. Well there done. Go. Well done. That's the core achievement. Well done, not everybody succeeds. That's true. <laughs> well, He's a programmer it, it, as well. Yeah. Oh. I